All right, boys, we got a fun one today. Let's water cool a 3090 Ti. So these are hot off the presses here. Um, as time goes on, more and more water blocks are starting to kind of get released for the 3090 Ti, which seems kind of odd because we're so close to um, the 4090 launch that I'm surprised they're actually, you know, R&Ding water blocks for a product that might only have like a six month life cycle, right? So today I will be using a Bixki block. You guys know I'm a big fan of Bixki. I don't buy EK products, I boycott them. That's a company that treats their customers like shit. So if Bixki has a model available, even though the instructions are much worse and the compatibility is much worse, this is also half price, by the way. So this one is half the price of the EK one and their customer service is better. So here we are. And it shows too, because EK laid off a whole bunch of employees. So when EK lowers prices, and gets their customer service together, maybe then we'll try them again. But in the meantime, this thing's half price. They can't be charging double when products like this exist, right? So the goal for today's video, we're gonna be comparing the stock 3090 Ti for the Win 3 air cooler versus this Bixki water block in terms of thermal performance and clock speed increase performance. So let's say you already have a loop. This thing was 130 US dollars. Let's see if it's worth it. Okay, so we're gonna be using this machine for our test setup today. This one already has a dual pump distro plate on it, right? So I can take the 3090 Ti here and just put a nice thick radiator down here. And this will be much easier for me to kind of do an A to B test, right? But right now we're on the stock 3090 Ti air cooled card, right? And even just with mining, I just touched the screen, damn it. Even with mining, we got 330 watts, 58. The temperatures are fantastic on the stock air cooler, right? So let's run some time spy and see what scores we can get, right? Okay, so the settings we're going to use here, plus 1250 on the memory. We're going to max out the fan speed because why not? And then we will do... 2220 megahertz on the curve here that should do it yeah that's stable for this card in time spy right this is the max stable that i know this card can do right so let's find out what score we can actually pull with this right so you can see here the gpu is actually pulling 500 watts right and the temperature is creeping up slowly as the benchmark goes on. I also do have the air conditioning on. You can probably hear the thing behind me going full blast right now. Because I'm trying to just keep the whole room cool while this thing is dumping almost 550 watts into the room, right? So yeah, now we're at 60. And we haven't even gotten through the, uh, the first benchmark yet. But it's performing very well though. But I... I can see this thing hitting, you know, 65, 70 Celsius in the next one. Yeah, 66. It just kissed 66, 550 watts, right? She's doing it without sweating, though. I must say that 12 pin is impressive. All right, the CPU test, who cares? We'll be back in a sec. So what we're paying attention to here is the graphics score, right? So we got 23... 375 without the water blocks let's run a port royal now and get two numbers here all right so the score we got 15631 so let's see what the temperature was here oh yeah so it was actually still hitting 65 celsius uh what's the core clock here core speed 2190 again 2205 so around that 2205 2190 range power wattage oh look at that i thought port royal pulled less power but it was still pulling like 520 that's interesting all right well we got our two scores let's go water block this thing so as with all big ski blocks you are shit out of luck when it comes to instructions. So you better know what you're doing if you're gonna install this thing. Otherwise, say goodbye to your beautiful card. Look at that. It totally fits. 
Look at that. Even the VRM lines and the chokes, the memory, it all lines up perfectly, man. Man, Bixky is the shit. All right, I think we're good to go here. I measured all the pads out and everything. Um, I will leave the instructions and pictures in the Discord for supporters. But other than that, let's throw it together, see the final product. And there we go. Fits completely perfectly in every way. It's awesome. Straight, no problem. The only problem, actually, there was one problem. These tabs for the PCB don't actually fit in there, so I had to bend them out of the way. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's just, I don't, I mean, you get what you get with Chinese products, right? So you gotta be willing to, to uh, finagle it a little bit to make it work, right? But I'm all down with that. Half price is half price, right? All right, I ran out of fittings yet again, but this should do temporarily. Let's see. Should be okay here. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're okay. We are a go here, okay. So I have all the fans here at max speed uh, just for testing purposes, so it might be kinda loud, but first, let's try and launch the miner to see what the temperature differences are. I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not going to warm the radiator up too much, but I just want to see if, uh, cause usually when you start the miner, the memory temperatures will go up after like, you know, 60 to two minutes kind of thing, right? 60 seconds to two minutes. So, okay. So I got the miner up. Let's crank the speed. I had it at 1650 before I believe. Let's try and go a hundred more here. Okay, so for Time Spy, let's go with 2235, just 50 megahertz more than before. And then let's see how far this, uh, let's see how far this slider will go before it actually crashes and see if we can actually get more clock speed. So with the heat soak, with the heat soak of the air cooler, it was at 2220 and afterburner. It was kind of at 2190 after it got to about 65 ish celsius right so the goal is let's see how much more frequency we can get by just keeping this thing cooler right all right time spy test one let's wait for the osd here here we go yeah 2235 looks like it's maybe pulling 10 to 20 watts less which kind of makes sense. Keeping the die cooler makes it pull a little bit less power. Um, 53 Celsius, 54. We got to see how high the temperature goes by the end of test two though, right? But it is holding 2235 though, right? So that's 50, 45 megahertz over 2190, right? 45. Oh, it just went down 2220. So 30 megahertz over now. All right, so we're nearing the end of test two here. We're at 50, oh, oops, 56 Celsius, 57 on the core. It's holding 2220. So we, we dropped about nine degrees Celsius over the air cooler, right? Not that much at all, not very much. I mean, this it's you gotta keep in mind this thing is still pulling 550 watts in time spy right you might actually get more of a clock speed increase in regular gaming when you're keeping the die down to about the 40s right so yeah 560 watts this is ridiculous right but it is holding 2220 though so let's see what the score is here and then we can compare it to before Okay, yes, yeah, so we had 23.3 before, so we gained 450 points. It's a total nothing burger. So, step number two, let's crank this as high as we can go, and then see what clock speed we can get, like, the maximum clock speed on water. Nice, 22.65. That's pretty sick. What's that? That's, uh, 75 megahertz more than before? That's pretty good. Not bad.
Let's see if this holds the whole way through. Yeah, we're in Time Spy Test 2 here, and it downclocked to 2250 because, well, Time Spy 2 pulls about 50 more watts than Time Spy 1. So the hotter the card gets, the more load it kind of downclocks itself, right? So it might even hit 2235 by the end of this. Um, but still, that's what, 60 megahertz? More than before, right? 20, yeah, 60 megahertz more than before. That's, I mean, I guess that's still less than 3%, right? So it's still, it's still kind of a nothing burger, but you gotta keep in mind, maybe we'll try a 1080p game after and we might see more gains. Time Spy is a special case because it pulls so much power, right? So every increment that you can get means a lot for the score at the end, right? So let's see. Let's see. Oh, it actually didn't down clock. So 2250, not bad. So let's see what this does here. Loading results, come on. 20, so we, it actually scored less than before. So yeah, we're, we're within, did it? Oh yeah, it did. Yeah, we're within margin of error here. So that's not, that's not even, uh, that's not even a factor at all. So the 15 to 30 megahertz over the 2135 that we were doing, yeah, we're not actually scoring any higher at all. So um, that's not because it doesn't scale. That's because Time Spy has lots of margin of error, right? Let's go try Port Royal here and see what happens. Yeah, so Port Royal is the same thing, 2250, right? So let's finish this up. And then let's hope for a higher score here. I mean, if this one is lower too, then maybe we're actually getting some kind of, uh, maybe we're getting some kind of performance regression of some sort by going too high on the clock speed. Or I don't know, I'm not really sure. Yeah, let's finish this up and then see what the score is. Uh, what's taking so long here? Let's go. 15775, is that more than before? Oh yeah, so yeah, it is 150 more points than before. So uh, what is that? Yeah, it, it's 1%, so uh, yep, nope. You know what, before we close out the video actually, let's see what clock speed we can actually get in a game of Warzone. We're gonna do 1440p here. I mean, this game looks incredible on this screen, I must say. Even even at uh, 1440p, because the native resolution is 4K, right? But yeah, man, even at 1440p, this thing looks fantastic. I think the Neo G8 is probably my favorite purchase of uh, this year, for sure. Just the biggest problem here is uh, selected input doesn't say controller. Nice, dude. Yeah, 2280, and it's not even pulling that much power, to be honest. Like, 1440p in this game doesn't pull too much power at all. Let's try, let's try 2300. I think we can do it. I think we can do it. No, I just tried to change it to 2300. I all tabbed and I all tabbed back in. Yeah, it just crashed. So, no, so even in a lighter load, I could only get another 20 megahertz, so it just it can't do it, man. Cannot do it. You know, I bet you if I actually put liquid metal on this instead of paste, I could probably get another 20 or 30 megahertz out of it. But honestly, we're so we're so into the point of diminishing returns here. What's another percent anyway? It's mostly just it's it's just cool to get 2300. You know what I mean? Or maybe I'll maybe I'll um. Maybe I'll put it in an ice bucket or some, just, just for funsies. Okay, let's get back to reality here for a second. So this PC is basically in its current form as of recording this video and this monitor. This is the most powerful PC, like single graphics card PC on the planet right now, right? So let's actually see if, you know, if you were to actually own this PC, what would it actually perform like with, uh, let's do 4K favor quality. Um, what would it actually perform like with this monitor, right? Let's actually 
continue into a game here. We'll do Horizon Zero Dawn first. Check out some frames. So let's see here. We're at... Yeah, man, this is just... This is something else here. So it looks like 4K max settings. We're pulling about 500 watts. Um, 105 FPS here on this display at 2250 megahertz. Uh, GPU at 55 Celsius. Holding steady, right? So, yeah, about five. This thing pulls around 500 watts in like a 4K game. But this just looks absolutely stunning though i must say like just man I, like the phone obviously can't pick it up but holy crap dude this is out of control oh shit 3000 fps loading screen so this is a 240 hertz screen after all one does not simply try 4k 240 hertz without doom eternal so we're gonna do 4k I've actually never played this game before, so I don't know. It'll do 4K Ultra with dynamic resolution scaling off, right? Um, I mean, this is just the menu, but it's holding 235, 570 watts. Holy shit. This is, that's a different level altogether. Yeah, look at that. 60 Celsius with a water block, dude. That's insane. Um... I don't know, let's play campaign. I've never played, I don't know. Yeah, look at that. I mean, we're just in this first area here, but uh, 500, this is, the, the power draw is too stupid to like, like I would, dude, six, it just kissed 610 watts there. 650, 650 watts? No, man, no. Yeah, 650 watts at like 270 FPS 4K Ultra. The like this backplate here is on fire. Like it's actually burning. Um, yeah, I don't think this card was meant to be pulling 650 watts, right? I would legit just be undervolting this and keeping the power under control here. E even I wouldn't even bother adding another radiator to be honest. Like 650 is totally unnecessary here. Nobody needs 4K 270 hertz. Nobody. So there's a lot of things going on here, right? But I must say that this is possibly the first product where I can kind of say that water cooling it is kind of a nothing burger, right? So the water block, let's say that thing drops the temperature by 15 Celsius we might only get like 90 megahertz out of it, right? And that really only equates to maybe like 2% performance, right? Also keep in mind that the air-cooled tests were with the fan speeds at 100% and it was still almost kissing 70 Celsius too, right? So it is quite noisy, but I mean, if you have your headphones on, who cares, right? But the other argument being if you're on a water block, it runs much, much quieter, right? Also, I only used one 360 radiator. You can always double that up to two 360s. Run even cooler, run even quieter. Those are kind of the pros that we're looking at here for water cooling, right? Now, probably the biggest pro that I would argue in favor of the water block is you're taking a four slot card and you're bringing it down to one and a half slot, one and a quarter, right? That is a massive space saving, right? I'm kind of thinking forward a little bit here. So next gen, if we're going to be running 600 watts on these next gen NVIDIA cards and they're like four and a half slots. Yeah, I mean, four and a half to one slot is massive. I'll take the water block, right? So it, it, it depends on if you care about the space savings or not, right? Also, the PCBs are much smaller, so there's a much larger use case for these for this type of product and like itx builds very small leader form factor builds right you can cram a lot of power with very little radiator space but from a sheer performance per dollar perspective um i would say if you're already running a loop and then adding a block is not too much work you know 150 130 dollars yeah why not right why not
But if you don't already have a loop and you're a high-end buyer and you're looking for that little bit of an edge to get more FPS, more performance, 100% not worth it when you actually include the cost of the fittings, the pump, the radiators, the coolant, the lines, all that stuff. Once you include all that, ew, you're like talking $2,000 for 2%, right? Nah. I didn't bother putting liquid metal on this for today because at the end of the day, it still is a $2,000 graphics card for me. I don't get these things for free. I have to pay for them with supporter money or consult money, right? So for me, maintaining the warranty at this moment in time at my channel size is more important to me than an extra 15 or 30 megahertz using liquid metal, right? So we're not going to go there with this card for today, um, but the performance isn't there anyway, right? Anyway, guys, leave a comment down below if you think that air cooling or water cooling is better for these graphics cards and what do you think is going to work better for next generation. And if you like the content, hit that subscribe button, do all that YouTube SEO stuff, like, share, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.